Hi, in this video we are going to talk about the array data structure, so let's get started. What is an array? Basically, arrays are data structures, a collection of elements or values, each identified by an array index or also known as keys. So we have values and these values are identified by an index or a key. Indices starts at zero for most programming languages such as Python, Java or C++. And because of the indices, random access is possible. What does it mean that random access? That we are able to access all the elements of the array. So we would like to get the item from the numbers array where the index or the key is equal to 4. We can do it without any problem and minus 45 is going to be returned as the value in the array with this index or with this key. So we can construct multidimensional arrays. It can prove to be very important in mathematical related computations. For example, we can store and represent matrices with two dimensional arrays. Of course, here in this situation, we will have two indices instead of a single index or key. So we have the row index and we have the column index. So we are able to construct this numbers two dimensional array. The first parameter refers to the row index. The second parameter refers to the column index. So for example, this number two, three means that it is in the number two dimensional array where the row index is equal to two and the column index is equal to three. So it references this red square. Okay, so arrays are data structures in order to store items of the same type. It's very important that usually we are able to store items of the same type. For example, in Java it is true, for Python we are able to store items with different types, but for most of the programming languages, arrays can store items with the same type. We can use indices as keys and arrays can have as many dimensions as we want. One or two dimensional arrays are quite popular, but sometimes it can be helpful to use three dimensional arrays or four dimensional arrays, whatever. In order to store a matrix, we have to use two dimensional arrays as we have seen. Basically, an array can be dynamic. It means that the size of the array can be changing dynamically. And the applications of arrays are lookup tables or hash tables or heaps for example. So several abstract data types uses arrays as an underlying data structure. Okay, so what are the advantages of arrays? We can use random access because of the keys. So we will see the get item method or something like this. It can have the name get or whatever. What's important that we have to specify an index or a key and it will return the value with the given key very, very fast in constant time complexity. This is the so-called random access that we don't have to search for a given item. We are going to talk about linked lists and linked lists do not support random access in the sense that if we would like to return a value, first we have to search for this given value. Here, for arrays, if we know the index, then we are able to return it without any problem in constant time complexity. So this is a random access. It is very easy to implement and use arrays. And it is very, very fast data structures. It's very important that we should use arrays in applications when we want to add items over and over again and we want to take items with given indices. For these kinds of applications, it's going to be very, very fast to use arrays as the underlying data structures. What about the disadvantages of arrays? First, we have to know the size of the array at compile time, so it is not so dynamic data structure. If it is full, then we have to create a bigger array and have to copy the values one by one from the old array to the newly created array. And basically, reconstructing an array 
takes ordo and so linear time complexity. Why? Of course, because we have to copy all the items one by one. So we have to iterate through all the array and we have to copy the items. So that's why it's going to have ordo and linear time complexity. And we are able to solve this problem much faster with the help of linked list data structure. And it's very important that it is not able to store items with different types. Okay, so basically arrays are very, very good, useful, when we know the indices of the item we would like to return. So we have a one-dimensional array, and for example, we know that the index of the item we are looking for is 123. In this case, we are able to return it in ordo 1 constant time complexity. For linked lists, we have to search and find this item first, and then we are able to return it. So, in the next video, we are going to talk about the operations for arrays. Thanks for watching.